No. Both Jimin and Jungkook looked at her. One shook her head in her sleep. Mom. She spoke and woke up on a gasp. She sat up and breathed heavily. Jungkook stood to his full height along with Jimin. A frown played on his eyebrow as he looked at her. Jungkook fisted his hands as his monster once again tried to break through. Tears gathered in her eyes. Gone was the fire as it was the pain. Her tears fell down her cheeks as she looked at Jungkook. Her trembling hands sweated her cheeks harshly as she got down the bed and made her way out. Where do you think you are going? A deep growl caused her to halt her steps and a wave of goosebumps covered her body. She embraced herself and decided to go out, but before she could take another step, strong fingers curled around her bicep and spinned her around. She gasped. Didn't you hear I asked you something? He whispered and that velvety timber caused a mess down there. I'm doing something that I should have done a lot earlier, she told him, and he glared at her. His fingers tightened around her bicep, and she hissed. You're hurting me, she told him, and he didn't lose his grip. Gion! She hissed, and he left her bicep while grinding his jaw. Animal, she barked out and earned a dark, playful glare for him. Her treacherous body craves his touch but he will burn her he will break her shred by shred and she would revel in the pain until it would be too late and too little left of her for her you're not going anywhere jungkook told her as he turned around and her eyes blazed when she saw his back muscles carved and the marks of wings that was too beautiful to be true. Something pushed her to him and she didn't acknowledge when her body moved and started tracing the line of his wings. When he turned around, the fog started getting down and when she looked up at his face, his sharp features, jaw set and lush full lips and the ring at the right corner taunting her. Sharp nose and then those eyes. Reality slammed on her and she found her conscious. She looked down on her hands. Were touching something hard and warm. Her hands were on his buffy chest and she was pressed to his front and he was not holding her. She backed away on a gasp. What, what did you do? She asked perplexed. Me? Or you? Well, you gave in to the temptation and embraced your future. He spoke with a smirk. N no, you, you put some spell on me. Something crazy. She groaned in annoyance and stormed out to her room at the corner of the hall. Jungkook chuckled and when he looked back, Jimin was staring at the door. What? Jungkook asked and Jimin looked at him. You're right. She is not an ordinary human. She just acted like she was possessed. But it was her powers overpowering her. And that happens only when one of us hasn't shifted yet. And he trailed off. And what? Jungkook asked. And I think she is Dalila. He looked at Jungkook and smacked. Deity of Aphrodite. Jungkook spoke. Jimin patted his shoulder while smirking and spoke. No doubt that your monster gets crazy for her, he laughed. But she doesn't completely smell like Dalila, he told him and he frowned at him. He knew what he meant by that. That she is a mixed breed. At midnight, Wine sneaked her head out of the door. She scanned left and then scanned right. Thank God, she whispered to herself. She sneakily came out with a bag on her back. She is in her combat suit ready to go to war, but actually, she is escaping paradise. Well, since 
She found actual peace in here, that's why it's a paradise for her. She went down the stairs, sneakily. The whole house was quiet and mostly dark. She looked around the dimly illuminated place and realized she created more memories here than in her whole life. The dining room brought tears to her eyes. The living room, she got the glimpse of Jungkook tickling her the other day. She turned around and the gaping hole recalled the memory of him. Murdering someone was vivid like a film rolling, but there was an inner voice. She was hearing that that was telling her. He did that for you. The voice felt so real, like another person trying to communicate with her, but couldn't make contact with her. Suddenly she heard a few noises, which she knew were coming from the basement. She closed her eyes and left let the tears fall because she's hurting. She's hurting that she's leaving him when she actually started looking forward to a future with him. She sweated her tears falling at the back of her hand and went to the door. She heard the rustling and the footsteps and she remembered about the gods on the front door. She bit her lower lip in nervousness and remembered the back gate. She sneaked out, but then she saw Brom in the house. She ruffled his fur and he licked her face. I'm sorry, baby. I can't stay. I had the best time here with you and your master. But it's not my home. We are not meant to be. A story was meant to end this way. A tear fell from her eyes and she sweated it away. Be a good boy when I'm gone. She told him with a painful smile and made her way to the back door quietly. Bam lay sadly on the ground because he was chained and couldn't go after her. She successfully made her way out somehow to the gods. One moment she almost got caught but then... A bat saved her life. She went on the road. The road was quiet. There were no cars, no nothing. She walked and then she walked another two hours, but still couldn't make it too far. And no cars at this moment. Suddenly, she started feeling scared. She felt someone's eyes on her. She looked around but couldn't see anyone. She started walking. This area feels so deserted. Suddenly two men appeared in front of her. They blocked her way and she took the other way. Look brother, that's Dahlila in our territory. One of them growled and the hair on her back stood in attention. She ignored them and started walking, but suddenly she felt a tight grip on her wrist. Where are you going, temptress? Show us how tempting you are. One of them spoke and shifted. He shifted and whined, God, it was not glorious at all. It was scary and looked nasty. He doesn't have wings, but he was he has horns and an Ugly, dusty brown fur appeared in places on his body. Same with the other guy, went back to way and made a run, but she couldn't even turn before a guy appeared on her front and then on her back. She started to tremble. The look on their faces scared her to her core. One of them caressed her cheek with the back of his hand and bile rose up in her throat. She whipped his hand away. His smirk widened. We love a fight, woman. The one standing on the right spoke and she looked at him angrily. She pushed them and made a run, but the one of them hold her hair and her jaw in a bruising grip. You will take what we both will give you. We will take turns and then we will take you at once and you would take us like a good girl Dahlila he whispered and his voice and words made her skin crawl they pushed her down in the middle of the road one of them 
moved his hand to her to her south while the other held her down her panic took the best of her and she started to rushing her whole body shook and then she pushed both of them hard and rose to her full height both of the men's eyes widened and they looked at each other that's not a dalila he whispered yelled at his companion who called her dalila she's a bezes he spoke to his companion she's one and we are two we can overpower her the other one spoke becoming blinded by lust they both attacked her they tried to catch her and failed every attempt one of them scratched her arm and she looked at him with her eyes blazing she held his throat and squeezed until his eyes rolled back the other one tried to attack her but never reached her she turned around and he was on the ground groaning she tilted her head as she watched him groan in pain she looked to her left and the smack played on her mouth was deviant jacob looked at her in complete awe and shock he now understood why his monster becomes feral for her because she is a biasis the most powerful but he couldn't understand why she smelled like a dalila he looked at her and she is not just an ordinary biasis he is the princess of biasis her features were defined in a hint of mock in her eyes but the lust was evident when she looked at him the tear on her forehead was shining like the sun her beautiful body is a complete definition the biasis have an attire when they change the sleek gown did nothing to hide her hard pleats it hangs around and it at the same time wrapped around her body perfectly the dress was unique and he knew biasis don't ship in this attire his eyes blazed when he remembered that she ran away from him he went to her and grabbed her throat and pulled her to himself her her hard peaks grazed over his bare chest he glared at her and she smacked me prince she spoke seductively from her demeanor jankuk figured her different behavior she was not in control her beautiful monster was controlling her her eyes glowed green the corner of her mouth curled up as he looked at her suddenly she started laughing throwing her head back the sound of her laughter was possessing everyone see it's the prince you want me but you can't have me she told him looking at his eyes come back to your senses one junko growled holding her face delila has possessed the power to tempt everyone even humans just by their mere scent and now that she was in her form her scent intensifies reaching the other creatures the males would be attracted towards her and that's why she needed to be out of the place or at least take control over her powers Wine didn't budge instead she tackled Jungkook down and threw a punch at him which he blocked by his hand Wine pecked him by his throat and tried to punch him Jungkook tackled her as he pressed her back to his front and shushed her in her ear she fought against him but stilled as he shushed her slowly her appearance changed and she came back to her usual form her knees buckled and her head spent she held his four arms around her waist she felt like she had been drained jankoo heard the man approaching as he nodded to his hinds and they swept back to their home when held jankoo tightly as they ran with as he ran with her in his arms faster than a cheetah she didn't know when she got home everything was a blur but when he threw her at the bed she knew she was dub before she could even look at him he was over her grabbing her throat in a tight grip his wings swung as he stared at her with anger in his eyes he looked 
and ugly. To everyone he would be a nightmare for them, but to her, he was a hot mess. Her eyes changed as her vision became blurry. To be continued.